Welcome to part three of Digital Badges Exposed, the technology behind a library badges program. This section is on learning object design or how to make effective tutorials. If you're thinking about starting a badges program, don't just do one-off tutorials here and there. Start with the big picture. Your program should be hierarchical and organized. There should be different levels of tutorials that are scaffolded. So if, for example, the Spark tutorials are all written with foundational learning outcomes. So together, the whole thing is kind of just a foundation. And as we grow the program, it should be higher level activities that should build in what we already have, for example. And also your badge art should reflect the hierarchy of your program. You can see a couple different examples here of how to do that. The badge art is important. It's it's kind of a pain to make the badge art because it's, um, I'm not an artist. <laughs> so it took me a little bit of effort to figure out how to do that and make badges look half decent. Um, but, do, but do consider this to make sure that your different levels of badges do look different. For example, the Pollock Library meta badge looks different than the four you have to earn to earn that badge. Central Florida did a different color for theirs, but used the same shape. So there's a few examples there. Something to think about before you get started. When you are designing your learning activities, I really encourage you to chunk your activities. The Spark tutorials only take 10 to 15 minutes each to complete. Um, each tutorial does encompass between three to five learning objectives, so to kind of keep that time, that time in mind. These are all lower level learning objectives. If you have higher level badges, they might take more time. Students have to do a project or something, but be conscientious of how much time it takes your students. You can find that out through user testing, for example. Uh, the short, shorter is better in that students can do them in short sittings and they stay engaged because it is fast paced. Um, shorter learning activities also allows your students to make progress quickly. They don't do everything all at once. Um, so just keep that in mind. Whatever you do, an effective program uses the backward design model. I'm sure you've heard this before. If, you, if you're in library instruction, <laughs> you've heard of backward design. But here's what it looks like. As the activity designer, start with designing your learning outcomes. That means where do you want your students to be when they're done with whatever your activity that you're planning? If you want students to be able to define database, maybe that's your learning outcome and then maybe that's how you design the rest of your instruction. So if your learning outcome was for a student to define a database, the assessment would be, go ahead, define a database for me, repeat it back to me. Again, the, the assessment is just any activity where students prove that they've mastered the learning outcomes. So it could be simulations, quizzes, graded projects. Again, the Spark tutorials are automated, so it's all simulations and quizzes. So you write the learning outcome first, you write the assessment next, and then you work on the content and the practice, which are the things that students consume and practice to be able to complete the assessment. In a perfect world, your assessment is airtight and students could be able to go straight to the assessment and if they mastered it, they mastered the learning outcomes, even if they don't have to do the content and practice. For example, maybe because they already know the topic. So this is how it actually looks to students. You should tell students what they're going to learn. They should experience the content. They should get some practice. The practice should be very similar to the assessment. And then they complete their assessment at the end to prove that they've mastered the learning outcomes. So for the Spark tutorials, we say, here's what you're gonna learn. Here's a short video, two to three minutes. Here's some practice on this concept. So something interactive where students are doing something. And then the assessment is usually just a remixed version of the practice that actually counts towards the final quiz score. So I'm sure you've seen this slide before. If you've heard of backward design, you've probably heard of Bloom's uh, revised taxonomy. The Spark tutorials are based on learning objectives written at the bottom two levels of Bloom's revised taxonomy, which conveniently translates very well to automated online tutorials. So just think about that for a second. If you want students to remember what the library has to offer, that's easily translatable into an online tutorial. I don't need to spend my in-class time explaining to students what the library has to offer. If students need to understand basic concepts, like they can use the catalog to search for books, easily translatable to an online tutorial. As you get higher 
in your learning objectives and the learning objectives are more complex and ask the students to do more. It's much more effort and design work and development work to translate that, translate that into an online tutorial. So again, the Spark tutorials are built to be foundational and point students in the direction of the frames, but they're also meant to help us scale up library instruction. So they're all written at the lower level and they all ask students to do basic things because when it comes down to it, I, I spend a good chunk of my one shots explaining really basic things to students. What's a database? Why use a database? What's wrong with Google? So why not put that into the online environment and then you can spend your in-person time doing the higher level stuff. But the ultimate design goal, regardless, is for your students to master the learning outcomes. And they only get the badge when they've proved that they've mastered the learning outcomes. So again, I really encourage you to automate this because that's what makes it scalable. So your content can be videos, practice can be a practice quiz. Um, Grading is great if it's automated because I don't have to spend any time grading. The badge issuance is great if it's automated because I don't have to keep up with anything. I have a system that does all of this for me. It does take a lot of design work up front, but it works very well and is sustainable in the back end. I just have to maintain things and troubleshoot. If you want to create tutorials, you have a lot of options. Again, I use Articulate Storyline 2 for the Spark tutorials. Adobe Captivate is similar. You might have heard of Soft Chalk or Lectora. All of these create interactive tutorials, quizzes, activities. They all cost a lot of money and have a little bit of learning curve to learn how to use them. Again, Storyline's pretty popular in libraries. It has a fairly low learning curve. Captivate's more complicated, unfortunately, but very powerful. But they're all, they're all kind of pricey, though. As a quick side note, if you do want to package as SCORM, I just want to tell you that it was a lot of work figuring out how to make my SCORM package tutorials play nice with Moodle, even though it's all the same SCORM technical standard, which is supposed to make everything play nice together. And it, it does play nice now. It, it took a lot of effort technically to figure out the settings. So something to keep in mind if you want to play with SCORM. Um, now that it's set up, I can actually just copy the SCORM uh, activities in Moodle, and I don't have to worry so much about um, setting this up. Basically figure it out once and then you can just reuse your tutorial templates and reuse the activities in Moodle. I took a lot of testing and figure this out. And I was also the first person on campus to um, use Storyline tutorials embedded in our learning management system, so it was a big learning curve. But you don't actually need fancy software to develop your tutorials and make your own badges program. You can use your learning management system. Your LMS is pretty powerful. You can build lessons and you can build quizzes directly within the learning management system. And they can use free online tools like Zaption or Edpuzzle to make practice activities. So Zaption, I actually think went out of business. Um, Edpuzzle is really similar though. Basically they take existing videos on the internet, whether you've made them or someone else has made them, and they allow you to insert uh, reflective questions and activities throughout the video. So the video will automatically pause and a student has to do something and you can collect um, information on how students did on those. And those make really nice practice activities for a student com to complete a quiz. So there's a lot of tools out there like that that'll let you make some really nice practice activities at no cost to you. Those are free. So there is a, a learning curve, of course, to learning to use your learning management system, especially again if you're a librarian that's never been in there. Uh, they're usually training on your campus though, and Luna.com or YouTube will have a lot of tutorials for Moodle, especially there's a ton of discussion forums out there with people doing similar things so I can learn from them. Whatever you choose, I really encourage you to do user testing. This is so important, I put it three times on this slide. I did a ton of testing to make my Spark tutorials work and to make sure the badges worked. I tried it all myself a million times, first designing tutorials and then implementing them in Moodle. I had my coworkers log in as students and try out the tutorials, give me feedback. And then I had the student workers in the library try it out. We're a big library, so we have a lot of student workers. And then go ahead and release it to the world, but provide a link to contact information and a feedback form in case someone has issues. So. The launch went really smoothly because I gave about uh, gave myself about a month, I think, to do all the user testing before I actually launched the four tutorials in our learning management system. But I did find a couple of bugs later on that I had to fix. So do a ton of testing. It'll save your world of heartache later. All right, it's time to take it home. 
If you're not in your learning management system, get in there. Make friends with your LMS administrators or IT, the people that make your learning management system go. Find out if there are instructional designers on your campus. It's the growing job on big campuses especially. They can give you advice on what learning activity software to use, and they can give you help troubleshooting your learning management system issues. Above all, outline your badges program first before developing and deploying content. Whatever you do, whatever you choose, good luck, have fun, and explore. Thank you for watching Digital Badges Exposed.